Before and after the presidency of Donald Trump, the United States was, and now it is again, on what I would call an intentional trajectory to fulfill what famous Freemason Manly P. Hall described as the secret destiny of America, which includes a future national and uh, global subservience to the God of Freemasonry, a deity that most Americans would not imagine when reciting the Pledge of Allegiance to One Nation Under God. In fact, the idea by some that the United States was established as a monotheistic Christian nation by those who designed Washington, D.C., and that the God referred to on American currency as a Judeo-Christian one, it's really a puzzling conclusion when reflected against the deistic beliefs of so many of the founding fathers, as you can see perpetually viewed in the so-called supreme architect deism of Freemasons and in the supreme judge of the world and the divine providence notations that are in the Declaration of Independence and other founding documents, as well as the countless pagan icons that actually dominate the symbols, the statues, the buildings, the seals that were carefully drafted under official government auspices, the Great Seal of the United States, primary among them, which Manly P. Hall, the famous Freemason, rightly called the signature of that exalted body of Masons who designed America for what he called a peculiar and particular purpose. It all bears rich symbolism forecasting anything but Christianity. As a matter of fact, when Christians in the 1800s argued that a hypothetical annihilation of the United States would lead to antiquaries of succeeding centuries, and by that they meant historians, concluding that America had been a heathen nation based on the symbolism of the Great Seal, Congress was pushed to create something reflecting the Christian faith of so many of its citizens. U.S. President and Freemason Theodore Roosevelt, he strongly opposed this idea, but other Masons weren't as frustrated with the plan because given the ambivalence of the term God and the axiom that interpreted within the context of the Great Seal's symbolism, this certainly would not infer the biblical Christian God. Therefore, the slogan in God we trust, whoever you believe that God is, was accommodated by Masons and other Illuminatus who therefore approved as the official US motto, the phrase in God we trust. In my book, Zenith 2016, which among other things noted that the year of Donald Trump's presidential election had been foreseen by prophets and sages for thousands of years as the apex date, when governments would begin shifting toward the spirit that is predicted on the great seal of the United States. The Antichrist, followed by the actual man of sin's arrival and acceptance on the global stage in the year 2025, which people will discover in the new book, Zeitgeist 2025. But this was to illustrate the point in my book, Xena 2016, that one definitely would not determine that the God in America's official motto refers to the Father of Jesus or a biblical trinity. I wrote in that book, quote, imagine yourself as a space traveler who visits Earth in a fictional post-apocalyptic world. Digging through the rubble of the once thriving planet, you come across a copy of a US $1 bill with the two-sided great seal of the United States joined in the middle by the phrase, in God we trust. Upon consideration, you ask yourself, what God did this refer to? And with no preconceptions, you allow the symbolism on the seal to speak for itself, from which you quickly determine that this had been a great culture who worshiped Egyptian and Greek deities, especially a particular solar one whose all-seeing eye glares from the top an unfinished Egyptian pyramid. Upon further investigation into the specific beliefs of the strange group whose members had influenced the Great Seal, you discover 
from their highest masters, including one illustrious Albert Pike, that the sun god they venerated so highly had been known to them at various times in history by the names Apollo, Osiris, and Nimrod, In quote. Now, I made that argument in Zenith 2016 because unknown to most Americans and certainly to the average Christian, the Great Seal's mottos and symbolism relate to both Osiris and Apollo specifically, and yet as one. Osiris is the dominant theme of the Egyptian symbols, his resurrection and return, while the mottos of the seal point directly to Apollo and the eagle, a pagan emblem of Jupiter, to Apollo's father. For instance, the motto Anuit Coeptus, this is from Virgil's Aenid, in which Ascanius, the son of Aeneas from conquered Troy, prays to Apollo's father, Jupiter, or Zeus. Charles Thompson, the designer of the Great Seal's final version, condensed line 625 of Book 9 of Virgil's Aenid, which reads, Jupiter Omnipotus, Adasibus Anuet Coeptus, which means all-powerful Jupiter, favors the daring undertaking. He condensed that down to Anuet Coeptus. He approves our undertaking. While the phrase Novus Ordo Seclorum, a new order of the ages, was adapted in 1782 from inspiration that Thompson found in a prophetic line in Virgil's Eclogue 4, which reads Magnus ad integro seclorum nascator ordo from Virgil's Eclogue 4, line 5, the interpretation of the original Latin being, and the majestic role of circling centuries begins anew. Now that phrase is from the Cume Sibyl, a pagan prophetess of Apollo, identified in the Bible as a demonic deceiver, and it involves the future birth of a divine son spawned from a new breed of men sent down from heaven when he receives the life of gods and sees heroes with gods commingling. According to this prophecy, this is Apollo, the son of Jupiter, or Zeus, who returns to Earth through mystical life given to him from the gods when the deity, Saturn, or Jupiter, returns to reign over the cosmos in a new pagan golden age, what the alignment of Jupiter and Saturn on December 21, 2020 forecast, which many, by the way, including pastors, were erroneously referring to as the Christmas star. According to the Greek text, the Magi followed an asteroid, not a stationary star alignment, whose trajectory led them to Bethlehem. But it was the closest that these two planets have appeared together in approximately 800 years not long ago, and it did indeed forecast the arrival of a messianic sun, the false one, whose spirit will reside in the beast of Revelation 17:8. From the beginning of the prophecy, referenced on the great seal of the United States, here's what we read. Now the last age by Kume Sibyl Sung has come and gone, and the majestic role of circling centuries begins anew. Justice returns, returns old Saturn's reign, with a new breed of men sent down from heaven. Only do thou at the boy's birth, in whom the iron shall cease, the golden race arise. Befriend him, chaste Lucina, tis thine own Apollo reigns. He shall receive the life of gods and see heroes with gods commingling, and himself be seen of them, and with his father's worth reign over the world. Assume thy greatness, for the time draws nigh, dear child of gods, great progeny of Jove or Jupiter Zeus. See how it totters the world's orbed might, earth and wide ocean, and the vault profound, all see enraptured of the coming time." End quote. According to Virgil and the Cune Sibyl, whose prophecy formed the Novus Ordo Seclorum on the Great Seal of the United States, the New World Order begins during a time of chaos, when the earth and the oceans are tottering, a time like today. 
This is when the son of promise will suddenly arrive on earth. Apollo incarnate, a pagan savior, born of the new breed of men sent down from heaven when heroes and gods are blended together. It sounds eerily similar to what the Watchers did during the creation of Genesis 6 giants, doesn't it? And why many believe that Antichrist also represents the return of the Nephilim. But to understand why such a fanciful prophecy about Apollo, son of Jupiter, returning to Earth should be important to you, in ancient literature, Jupiter was the Roman replacement of Yahweh. As the greatest of the gods, he was a counter Yahweh. His son Apollo is a replacement of Jesus, a counter Jesus. And this Apollo comes to rule the final new world order when justice returns, returns old Saturn's reign. Now this ancient goddess Justice who returns Saturn's reign, Saturnia Regna, the pagan golden age, was known to the Egyptians as Mat and to the Greeks as Demas, while to the Romans she was Lustitia. Now statues and reliefs of her adorn thousands of government buildings and courts around the world, but especially in Washington, D.C., where she stands as familiar Lady Justice, blindfolded and holding scales and a sword. She represents, according to the prophecy, the enforcement of secular law and is, according to this Sybil's conjure, the authority that's going to require global compliance to the zenith of Satan's dominion, concurrent with the coming of Apollo. What's more, the Bible's accuracy concerning this subject is alarming, including the idea that pagan justice will require surrender to a satanic system in a final world order under the rule of Jupiter's son. In the New Testament, the identity of the god Apollo, repeat coded in the great seal of the United States as the Masonic Messiah, who's going to return to rule the earth, is the same spirit verified by the same name that will inhabit the political leader of the end times new world order. For instance, according to key Bible prophecies, the Antichrist will be the progeny or the incarnation of the ancient spirit of Apollo. 2 Thessalonians 2.3 says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. And this is the Greek word, Apollia, Apollo. Revelation 17, 8, likewise ties the coming of Antichrist with Apollo, revealing that the beast shall ascend from the bottomless pit and enter into him. It says, the beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition, Apollia, Apollo. And they that dwell on earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was, and is not, and yet is, in quote. Among other things, this means that the great seal of the United States is a prophecy hidden in plain sight by the founding fathers for more than 200 years, foretelling the return of a terrifying demonic god that seizes control of earth in the new order of the ages. This supernatural entity was known and feared in ancient times by different names, Apollo, Osiris, and even farther back as Nimrod, whom Masons consider to be the father of their institution. In the last chapter of the book, Zeitgeist 2025, we circle back to that prophecy to expose the most insidious aspect of the scheme that is now counting down to the year 2025. The information that I just shared with you is only the tip of the iceberg of what I reveal in my new book, Zeitgeist 2025.